Hi, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about arc length in relation to angles. So I'm going to provide a little bit of language at the beginning, and then we'll get into the formula. So when we have an angle that is in standard position, we can think of it as creating a sector of a circle. Then we say that the arc that joins the initial side and the terminal side of the angle subtends the angle. So subtends is like the verb we're using to describe that arc that goes from one side to the other. So if we think about our circle here, we have the initial side, it draws out to the terminal side, and this area is a sector of the circle. Okay, so given this language, let's talk about the definition of arc length. So we would say the length of the arc, which is the arc length, that subtends a central angle theta, that's this symbol here, and a circle of radius r is given by the following. So I'm just defining our basic things here that are related to each other. So we have arc length, that's the arc spanned by this angle. The angle is theta, we're calling it a central angle because it's coming from the center of the circle, and it's on the circle with a radius of r. So using this information, we get the formula that s, the arc length, is equal to r, the radius, times theta, the angle. And that's our formula. So why is this true? Let's talk about why s would equal r times theta. So if you remember back to what a radian is, we defined a radian as the angle required to draw out an arc that is one radius long. So if we took the radius and drew out an arc that long, that would be one radian. So if we set our angle to be one radian, then the arc length is one radius, since that's what radians do. They draw out an arc length of one radius. And so this matches our formula. We would take the arc length is equal to r times theta, but theta is one. And so we'd get that the arc length is the radius, s equals r. So this works for one radian. And the same thing then holds for the other angles. So if we have theta is two pi radians, then the arc length is going to be two pi of that radius. We're gonna do the radius two pi times, since we're doing two pi radians instead of one radian. So we would just take the radius times how many radians we're doing, right? So r times two pi, and we get two pi r. And this here is our formula for the circumference of a circle that you've maybe seen before. So this arc length formula also relates back to that. So because this idea of arc length relates back to radians, radians where the length of the arc is one radius, this formula is only going to work with theta, our angles, measured in radians. So if you're ever doing these and you're given an angle that's in degrees, you're going to need to put it into radians because this formula works specifically for radians. All right, let's try this out on an example. So let's say that on a circle with radius 10 units, what is the length of the arc that subtends an angle of pi over three? So here we're looking for the arc length, we're looking for s, and we know that s is equal to r times theta. So r is our radius, here it's 10 units, and then theta is our angle, it's pi over three. So putting these into my equation, I'm doing s, the arc length, is equal to 10 times pi over three. And these are like 10 units as my radius, so I'm getting 10 pi over three units as my arc length. Now, that number might not mean much to you, seeing 10 pi over three, so I sometimes like to type it in my calculator just to get a decimal answer. So I'm getting 10.47 units as my arc length. And there we go, that is our final answer. All right, so that is how you calculate arc length if you're given the radius and an angle. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.